the wizard. Now you can build him in two different ways. You can build him like this, like a bloody throat neck lizard, with a collar and a cape and spark plugs popping out of his head. Or you can build him like this, a bit more simply, a bit more of a savage orc shaman with less frills, but no less thrills. For this video, let's go the frilled neck lizard option. Now, here's all the parts you get in the kit. You also get two little whiz runts, which we're going to paint in a different video. As always, we need to start by clipping out the supports off the miniature. And if you want to use this head here, watch out for these little sparks popping out of the spark plugs. They're very fragile, they're very sharp, very fine detail. So be very careful with the supports around there. Don't, don't be snapping them off like a, like a nong. Just take your time with it. Try not to get your fingers all over it too much. We're just going to stick him on this blue tack here on a miniatures holder to keep him safe. Now there's lightning on his wizard stick as well, so we, we want to be very careful when we're clipping those out. I like to start with the supports around the lightning first. Once we've cut everything out, we've got to just clean up the little support knobs, the little points where the supports hit the model. They leave these little knobs, these little nubs. We just need to shave them off, there's nothing to it. Put on some relaxing music or some death metal. Whatever relaxes you, whatever relaxes you. And just start shaving away. Now this is much easier than cleaning mold lines, I'll tell you that much. Let's get some sandpaper. And start sanding the bottom of his feet, just flattening them out. Just getting rough with it because he's going to be standing on a base anyway, so I don't need to worry too much about being careful with the supports under his feet i'm just trying to rip them off as quick as possible so we can get to it now for this video we're using this spark plug head here's some spent ammo casings to whack on the base 40 millimeter base now with the the rubble on the base the rock detail we're going to push it towards the back of the base we don't want to center it and get some gorilla super glue top quality stuff and just put some little blobs on it and when we put it on the base we're going to push it towards the back now the other thing is if you're going to use a plastic base like this find the little knob and make sure that that's going towards the back as well i don't want to see any knobs on the front of your bases i don't like knobs on my bases now as i said it can be made two ways this is the savage orc shaman way now when i'm making parts i usually key the parts which means I usually have a plug in a plug hole with a fart parts with a farts fit together but for this model I didn't want to be having plugs and plug holes all over the back here just in case you want to use the savage orc shaman so we've got to attach this cape in a little bit of a different way so now see this part of the of the frill here that goes to the bottom that little panel with the holes in it what we're going to do is we're going to sit that together on the body and it's going to fit it's going to find its natural position quite well. We're going to hold that in position and then we're going to grab the cape and we're going to just let the cape, let the slots, these little grooves here on the back of the cape slot and groove into and between the back muscles and in a way that's kind of our key for the cape and it's going to just snap together quite well. That's how we're going to do it. But now see this little bit here. On the back of the frill that's part of the cape and that is going to line up with this part of the cape here so what we're going to do is we're going to practice this a few times we're going to practice the dry fit it's like as though we were doing a backflip we're not going to get it first go so why would we go and do a backflip on the grass first go we're going to get neck we're going to neck ourselves so we're going to practice a few times on some soft fall we're going to practice a few times before we get out the super glue once we understand how it fits together then we can get the super glue and put it in these little grooves here. We can get our collar. There's no super glue on this collar. We're just dry fitting this. We're holding it in place. Find that right sweet spot. Get our loaded cape. Put it in position. The collar might move around a little bit, but that's okay. The cape's going to know exactly where to go. 
Now it's dry. After three seconds, that's all it takes to dry. Good stuff, this Gorilla Super Glue. Now I've got the cape on there. Now see this little bit of corrugated iron here? This little ridge here? Turn him around. In that exact underside of the ridge, we're going to just drill a little hole. We're going to start applying some bits of wire to these parts. We're going to attach them to bits of wire so that we can spray them, just like, just like so. All we need is a little hole for the end of that wire to slot into. A bit of Gorilla Super Glue. Pop him in there. Hold it there for a few seconds. And that's all it takes. We're going to drill some holes in the base here. Right where the feet go. Just make sure they're lining up before we drill the holes, of course. I'm going to push a piece of wire through both of the holes and then clip them down almost almost to the level of the base. Watch out, wear some goggles or something, because look at this. Pew! That bit of wire is sticking out the concrete wall on the other side of the studio. Bit of paint, doesn't matter what color. I'm going to use black because it's the best color. I'm a black knight. Put a few little dollops of glue on the end of those wires. Remember, they're only sticking out by half a mil. Line up the main part of the model and just press him down onto those bits of wire. Now watch this magic. Now we know exactly where to put the holes in the bottom of his feet. Let's get our drill and drill him out. We're going to prop him up on two bits of wire so he's easy to paint, easy to prime. Make sure he's going to fit into the base. We don't need to adjust too much. Yep, he's going to fit. Jobs are good. Satisfied. Satisfaction. Again, we're practicing before we're getting out that super glue. Once we know, now we can get the super glue and glue him to these bits of wire, which are sticking out of a block of wood. And this is going to make him so much easier to spray paint when we prime him. We're going to be able to get every angle. We're going to be able to get under his cape, on top of his cape, all around him. Let's not forget to put our lids on, though. Crikey. We've got a few base details to put on this. Now we've got Fergus here. Let's call him Fergus the Space Rat. We've got bottles of Orc booze. And we've got spent ammo casings. Now they're not part of the kit, but I'm just going to give them to you. They're just on the Patreon. Rip into it. Get an old container and get some PVA glue. That's not PVA glue. That's, that's, that's barbecue sauce. This is the one. This is the PVA glue. It's in the tomato sauce bottle. Mix some up on an old brush. Start painting it onto the base. What else can I say about that? Not much. Just do it. Get rid of the brush. We're not interested in that anymore. We're going to get some dirt. This is just dirt from the garden. Now I've got a patron whose name is Alex Wolf from Denmark. He tried to tell me there ain't any dirt where he lives. I just told him, I told him, he says, where does he get your dirt from? I said, go, go down your garden and just get it. But he's like, I've got no dirt anywhere. So I made him go down a park and dig a hole. I made him steal some dirt from a Danish park. So once we've sprinkled that dirt and it's dried, we coat it with another coat of PVA glue. And then we're going to just go and grab Fergus, the space rat, and just plonk him in the PVA glue. Now, I should be pinning this, but I can't be bothered. I'm just going to send it. Now, you can put him anywhere. You can actually put him right here if you want, where we're going to put this bottle of Orc booze using a bit of super glue for this one. Then we're going to grab some of our spent ammo casings. Just whack them here and there. Just in the wet PVA glue. These ones should be right, they're only tiny. I'm more worried about Fergus falling off. I really should have pinned him. Should have pinned him. Now use a pair of sharp and clean tweezers for these spent ammo casings because they're very fiddly. You can't do it with your fingers. Unless you're like a an elf. Now these are the four main subsections that we've got. We can go and prime them now. We're going to use Chaos Black Spray Paint. And I've just gone and spray painted them off screen. You can see me doing it in the Mezgob video. 
Make sure you clean up your garbage. It's satisfying, isn't it? Ooh, part two already. Colours. Now this is the Mezgaic way of coming up with colour schemes for your miniatures or your armies. Call it the caveman colour theory. Start by just selecting some colours and putting them together and see how they jive. See how they're mixing. Starting with some metallics here. Choosing some green for the skin. We know that there's going to be green skin so at some point we've got to decide what kind of green skin we want. Always going to use black. Black's my favourite colour. What else are we going to use? I'm just grabbing these off the paint rack. We're going to grab some browns. This is going to be quite a savage, a savage orc color scheme. So we, I'm going to use a few browns. And this one here is almost more of a red. I always see Doomble Brown as more of a red than a brown. And it's going to offset the green quite nicely. We're going to have a lot of skin, obviously. And red offsets green very well. They're opposites. We're going to use some intense green glow this is great stuff and now when i'm creating glow i always like to have a, a very hot color like this one for the source and then i like to offset it with a bit of a cooler color for the exterior part of the glow like this one's the more more of the immediate glow and this one is more of the the outer glow kislev flesh is a wonderful color i use it for highlighting black for highlighting brown for highlighting skin you can use it on cuts and bruises i put it on my porridge Fenrisian grey. Again, this is going to offset some of the highlights in the black areas. Cool some of the highlights down a little bit. Might use a bit of typhus corrosion. Not sure. And for the orc booze, I'm trying to decide between Nurgle's Rot and Blood for the Blood God, like Blood for the Blood God, kind of a red wine colour, or Nurgle's Rot, like what the fuck is that slop that you're drinking? Kind of thing, you know? Not sure at this point. Washes. I'm going to use some washes here. Known oil and Agrax Earthshade. Always a must. Always a must. And Seraphim Sepia. I see it as the grim dark color. The, the grim dark wash. Not sure if we'll use that right now. What we're going to do is just going to grab them all. See how they're jiving. Is anything standing out? Is anything out of place? Might get rid of that. I think we're going to go for the Nurgle's Rot Orc Booze. Yeah, no, good call, good call, bros. Let's start painting. This is not a sponsored video, but Redgrass Games send me their stuff sometimes. I love it. This is the wet palette. It's what we do. Open him up. Get this spongy stuff here. Stick it in there. Get one of these washable membranes. Put it on top. Hit it with some water. Now we're ready to paint. Here we're just examining the the parts that we've primed as always i always under prime only 80 percent spray it so it gives a speckled look let's smooth it out with some abaddon black as we move into part three block in the elements get it on that wet palette mix some of this water with it and just start painting all over the model do this as quick as you can get it out of the way just fang it and um Hope everybody's having a lovely day. This is Mournfang Brown. It's a wonderful brown. One of my favorite browns. We're going to use this to paint all of the leather parts. Like his belt. Come on, come on, come on, come on, come on, come on. Next part, show me the next part so I can say the words. Show me the next part so I can say that these boots. We're gonna do his boots. We're gonna be. We're gonna do any kind of string or rope. We're gonna do the other side of his boot. Here, we're doing the other side of his boot. These rope, these ropey things, almost like dreadlock ropes. Get rid of that brush. That is. I'm sick of that brush. It's rubbish. Switch over. Wasn't happy with that brush at all. I switch to this finer brush. These ropey bits have little frayed bits. One sculpting the rope on these, on this guy. I try to get character even in the rope. Why not? If you're going to sculpt rope, just make it interesting. We're going to paint some of the patches on his cape. And we've got more rope on his collar. 
These are all the leather bits. And rope bits. And patches. Doom Bull Brown. This is more like Doom Bull Red. Well, it is brown. It's got a lot of red in it. We're going to use this to paint all of the Orc Booze bottles. I wanted these to have kind of like a terracotta, like a pot feel. Like imagine one of them landing on the ground. It's going to make that pot cracking sound rather than glass. No, I just, I just liked that vibe, that part of storytelling that I'm always trying to, I'm always trying to get into my miniatures. I'm always trying to put storytelling in it's just subtle ways. You know, you could paint these bottles like glass if you want, sure. You could paint it like metal, whatever. But I reckon it just says a lot about the savagery, the, uh, the feralness of these orcs, that they make their bottles out of clay. But the other reason we want to do this is to introduce some red, some red hues into the model, which are going to offset the green skin and the green glow. Blighted gold, one of my favorite. Uh, uh, look, I know it, the lid's broken, but don't worry about it. It's what's on the inside that counts. And what's on the inside of this is gold, literally. Blighted gold by P3, get it. Get it for Christmas, we birthday. Tell your mates about it. We're going to use it to paint these bullet casings. And we're also going to use it to paint all of the jingle bells on this wizard. Because in all culture, right, the wizards need to be covered in bells and cans so that the other lads can hear the rattling and the jingling from a mile away and they can get the hell out of there. And all the runts are screaming, Shit boys, like it! The bloody wizard's coming! And then the wizard shows up and turns them all into space chickens. Should have listened to that run. Where, where were we? We're using metal colour copper to paint all these little Tesla coil things. On the wizard stick. Amazing colour. Amazing paint range from Vallejo. The metal colour range. We're also going to use this copper to paint some of these larger bells on his collar. This is introducing a bit of variation and variety between the different golds and metallics. We've got some gold jingle bells and we've got some copper colored larger bells. We're also gonna use this copper to paint the belt buckle. Now we're about to go into the next section, part four zenithal texture. We're going to need an old brush like this and we're going to need some lead belcher. Now this video is all about getting out of our comfort zone. I've already spoken like an orc and a runt. What else am I going to do? I'm going to get out of my comfort zone so are you. We're going to flick paint all over this model with a bloody paintbrush. We just need to load up the brush with some thin down lead belcher and start running our finger over it like this, just flicking it everywhere. But we want this to create a bit of a zenithal highlight over the whole model. That's the first thing we wanted to do. Second thing we wanted to do is create texture. I want to create texture, a lot of texture. I'm fascinated with texture today. Let's get it all over the model. Now, if you've got an airbrush, a faster way of doing this is to just turn the PSI right down of the airbrush and run some lead belcher through it and it's going to spatter all over it. That's a faster way of doing it. But I'm doing it this way just so I can show you for those who don't have an airbrush or aren't interested in airbrushes. You can do it like this as well. It's quite easy and it's quite fast. And it gives the same sort of effect. Now we're painting this miniature today for a little orc army. This isn't a full on uh, like competition display model. This is just... This is a bit more quick and nasty, a little rough around the edges because I'm doing it for an orc army. And now when I'm designing a paint scheme for an army, I want it to be effective, but I don't want it to take bloody ages. So I have to find that right balance of creating something that looks effective and something that's not going to take weeks to do. We have to make sure that when we're applying this spatter, we've, we've got a bit of direction going like this. So we want it to be emanating from that, the main light source, which is up there on the wizard stick, that lightning, and see how it just naturally picks out the highlights of the muscles and the folds. It's doing all that hard work for us. Makes our finger a little bit silver. Should have worn a glove, but 
I didn't. Metal medium. I'm going to do exactly the same thing. But this is just going to brighten that spatter right up. It's going to shine through the, the following layers that we do. Now remember, we're getting out of our comfort zone. Because when you get out of your comfort zone, that's where you find the magic. You're not going to find gold by digging around in your backyard. you got to get in a truck. you got to get in the muck. you got to go into the bush. That's where you're going to find gold. So anyway, um, we're designing a paint scheme for an army here. And we can't be spending days and days on one miniature. I did this miniature in less than a day from start to end. Which is pretty quick and uncomfortable for me. But, you know you got to find ways of making this paint scheme more interesting rather than spending ages making su super smooth blends. Rather than doing super smooth blends, what can we do to make this look interesting? I, I just thought I'd throw paint all over it. That was real magic. Part 5, skin, clothing, leather, and... I missed the last thing. Before it disappeared on me. We're using wire flesh to paint this skin and we're mixing water with it. A lot of water, an uncomfortable amount of water. It's almost a wash, isn't it? It's not a wash, but borderline a wash. Can you bloody hear these cockatoos everywhere, man? I'm sorry about all of the background noise. I can't, I can't get away from these bloody birds. I'm, it's like I'm in those sticks. So anyway, we're painting a very thin, translucent coat of paint on this skin. And we're not even going to do a second coat. We're just going to do one coat. And this is going to do five very good things for us. Number one, it's going to look translucent. Number two, it's going to have texture. It's going to have that spattered texture. And it's going to have mottled texture. Number three, it's going to shimmer from all that silver splatter when you turn the model in the light. Number four... It's going to require little work because the highlights are already there. And number five, it's probably going to do something else good too. Kiss Lev Flesh. Ooh, what a colour. We're going to do the same thing for old Fergus here. Fergus the Space Rat. We thinned that Kiss Lev Flesh right down into an uncomfortable consistency. And almost just washing it over the anatomy of this little space creature. And that kiss lev flesh, because it's so thin, it's finding the gaps, it's finding the recesses, which is making the recesses lighter than the raised surfaces, which is an uncomfortable situation. I feel a little bit uncomfortable about it, but I'm excited about it, because it's creating such an interesting mottled texture. That black is shining through, even on the tongue here. And you know, sometimes you really want to do two or three coats, because you want a, a really consistent layer sometimes, sometimes you just need that. But when you just try something new like this, you, you realize that you're getting a lot of character. A lot of accidental personality when you're not being too perfect. A bit of Abbott on black. Get some on the palette. Get an old toothbrush. Get some black on the toothbrush. Wipe most of it off. Almost like you're going to do some dry brushing. We're going to create a bit of random scratches here and there. Just a little bit more texture. I'm mostly just playing around here, just seeing what happens. I found that it looked best over these brass bits, over these copper bits. Almost like you're dry brushing over the, the raised surfaces of the Tesla coils. And it just hits those raised areas. Again, making the raised areas darker than the inside. Darker than the recesses. But I like the effect that it gives. Now be very careful around these lightning bolts up here. They're very delicate, and these bristles will just rip them straight off if you're not careful. By adding this texture, we're getting, we're getting scratches, and we're getting tarnish to this copper. It's making it look old, it's making it look worn, but it's also darkening them up, which is good because we're going to be creating a lot of glow around it later on, and glow always looks better when it's surrounded by darkness because that is contrast. The darkness makes the glow appear brighter. Hit some of these bells, get some more black on there. Now we're going to do some flicking. Going to do some more spatter, but we're just having a go of the toothbrush this time. Practice it a little bit on the wet palette before we get into it. This time we're going the opposite direction 
than we did with the silver. Just enhancing the shadows a little bit, just experimenting, only a very subtle effect. We're after a lot of texture here, so my wife lent me one of her brushes. Problem is, I need it to be all damaged and mangled and frayed. So I'm just curb stomping it on my desk here. I'm just hacking it up with some clippers. Making it all random and frayed. All she said was just make sure I return it when I'm finished. <laughs> uh, gonna get a little bit of Fenrisian grey on our wet palette. And using my wife's brush. <laughs> oh, sorry. Just gonna stipple. <laughs> Shit. I'm in trouble. Just gonna stipple Fenrisian grey <clears throat> all over the cloth, all over the cape and all over the pants. So remember we already have all of that spatter showing us where to put the highlights and all we're doing with this Fenrisian grey is just kind of going over those highlights already and just blurring them a little bit, blending them out. We don't want them to look completely silver. I actually, actually like the silver look and the shimmer and the sheen that it gives when you turn it, but we don't want the cape to be looking like it's made out of metal, do we? That would just be crazy. So what we're doing is just stippling with this mangled up brush and uh, just blurring it a little bit. We're gonna get some on the pants as well. We're just, we're introducing a bit of cold blue to this black. Now we are blurring it, but we don't want to over blur it. Throughout the whole process of painting this miniature, we're going to be refining, gradually refining. But as we refine, we want to try and maintain the texture that we've given ourselves. All I've got to do is make sure that I return it. I'll put it back on a desk, maybe. So we just need to switch to another old brush, but just a bit of a finer brush. Because we're just refining this stippling. And this smaller brush is going to allow us to get the harder to reach places. Like these little folds up here in between the ropes and the can. I reckon he had in that can. Can of beans. Space beans. Space mushrooms. Space rat. The smaller brush is allowing us to get these folds in the pants around the crotch area as well as the top of the knee. Remember that, that spatter that we did earlier that's shown us where to put these highlights. All we're doing with this is just sort of feathering it a bit. Just poking around see what happens we can switch to an even finer brush again and we're just gradually refining our area of highlighting even starting to get a little bit of edge highlighting and a little bit of glazing even not too much glazing remember we're we're trying to do this quickly but we can give ourselves the luxury of just doing the quick glaze here and there if we need to why not Make our own rules. And this brush is is actually a good brush. It's a Winsor & Newton Series 7, which is a bloody expensive brush. But it's really old and it's had it. It's knackered. So we can use it for stippling. It's better to use it for stippling than throw it in the bin. And it's going to let us stipple and poke around up there in those folds, those fine ones. We're going to mix some Wa flesh with Kislev flesh. It looks a little bit like that. I guess it's about one to one, doesn't really matter, don't really care. 
exactly the same way that we just stippled that Fenrisian grey on the clothes and the cape. We're going to do that on the skin. Just going to increase the highlights of the skin. Now remember that spatter has already shown us where to highlight on each one of these muscles or bits of tummy flab. All we got to do is just enhance it. Blend it a little bit. But always keep that jittery stippling action going. See my hand, my, br my brush is just constantly bouncing around all over the place, trying to maintain the texture that we've given ourselves. Just look at each little piece of muscle or skin or flab and highlight each one individually. This deltoid up here. This bicep. Just poking around. Increasing highlights. Nothing to it. It's so easy. Just give it a go. Now I'm always trying to create harmony with my miniatures. And that means sharing highlight colors across different elements of the model. So we're using Kislev flesh. We've mixed that into the wire flesh, which is the base flesh. The base color of this flesh. We're going to use that Kislev flesh on the black clothes, the brown leather. So we're going to use it in the skin. And that puts all of the all of the different elements in the same environment as each other. We could have just gone and grabbed a lighter green, something like Scar's Neck Green or whatever. But it's easy enough to just mix a couple of paints together. Plus you save yourself a bit of money, not having to buy all the paints. Now let's take your time with the skin. The skin is a bit of a time consuming process because there's quite a lot of it. Especially if you're going to build this guy like the Savage Shaman without all of the frilled neck lizard stuff. He's going to have a lot more skin on his back. But it's a dominant area of the model, so I think it requires a little bit of... Well, I think it deserves a little bit more attention than something like his belt buckle. He's going to get that done quick, smart, and move on. But his skin, we're going to go back and forth. There's a few little holes in his pants where his skin's poking through. Like on his kneecap here. We want to make sure that we highlight those so that they stand out. Because they're interesting details. And they look quite nice when the model's finished. I like to highlight his knuckles and make those a little bit of a feature. I just find them interesting to paint and to look at. Not in a weird way, I don't, I'm not obsessed with knuckles and fingers. I'm going to move on to highlighting his face now. Highlighting his cheeks, and his lips, and his cheekbones, his brow, his nose, all the prominent stuff. But, you know what? We're not going to spend too much effort on this face in particular because the skin of his face is not really the feature. It's going to be the spark plugs and the lightning zapping around all over the top of his noggin. As well as a little bit of war paint that we're going to do at the end, which is going to cover up most of the skin anyway. But nevertheless, we'll just give it a bit of attention. Just because. Let's do a little bit of work on the leather. Hornfang brown and Kislev flesh. Mixing them up in, a, in the same way that we did the skin. We mixed Kislev flesh into the skin color. We're mixing Kislev flesh into the leather color. Again, about one to one or whatever. And we just gradually go around and add highlights to the leather and these little bits of string, these little tires, the boots, stippling as much as we can. Sometimes we need to use a little bit of an edge highlight or a glaze, that's fine, whatever you want. But just try to keep that stipple texture alive because the more paints 
we add, the more layers we apply, and the more we fiddle with it, the more we will lose the texture. So we want to keep adding texture or keep looking after that texture. The texture is our friend today. A lot of the time we're trying to smooth out the texture and make really nice smooth blends, but not today. No. Today we're savages. We're getting savage with this savage orc. This savage orc wizard. Stippling all over those patches and increasing the highlights. As well as the rope. Almost dry brushing every now and then on some of these ropey bits. Gonna get some Doomble Brown. And again, we're gonna stipple this over all of the pots, all of the clay stuff, the orc booze bottles. Just poke around, use a combination of dry paint and wet paint, almost like the sort of consistency you'd use for a glaze. So the brush might be loaded with wet paint and it's almost like you're glazing it, but you're not, you're just poking it around and seeing what happens. We're gonna change the hue of some of these patches, not all of them, just one or two, just to make a little bit more variation, a little bit more interest. Don't forget the smashed pot on the ground and these little bits of broken pot all around scattered everywhere just glazing just like coloring in almost like you're scribbling imagine if you're a little kid and you just you just got a crown and you're just scribbling everywhere just going to use some pure kislev flesh increasing the highlights We're actually doing this on the pants here, on the black. So we've highlighted all of the black with Fenrisian grey, but now we're just going to give it a little bit of Kislev flesh. Now we're going to use Abaddon black, and we're actually going to glaze now. We're going to glaze this black on the pants. We're going to glaze it on the brown leather. We're going to glaze a little bit even on the skin. We're just going to go here, there, everywhere, wherever we think we need to. Because we haven't even done a wash on this model yet, have we? And usually when I'm painting something, I'll paint all the elements and then I'll do a wash. And that wash will unify all of the elements and it will fill the gaps. It'll kind of almost automatically pinline everything. It'll draw a black line around every element. And we haven't done that yet. So some of these elements are a little bit blurred together. So. So what we're doing now is we're just glazing everywhere and we're just directing a little bit of black in towards the shades, in towards the gaps and the lines between, say, the belt and the belly here. Adding a bit of shadow onto the pots around the strapping, this string, this rope here around the pots. Get rid of that brush, switch to a bigger brush. We're going to actually glaze the cape glazing into and towards the shadows. This is both pulling the, the speckle into line a little bit. It's just diluting it a little bit. It's making it a little less shiny and metallic. But we're also darkening those shadows because we don't want this cloak, this cape, to look grey. We want it to look dark and Almost black, almost brown. Not, sure, not really sure at the moment, but we needed it to be dark. We also need to add a bit of darkness to the metal. And the metal, we want to be especially careful about the texture. Having this spattered, um, flecked look on the metal was one of the main ideas I had about flicking metallic all over the place. I mostly wanted this on the metal, but in doing so, I discovered that I wanted it on the skin and the cloak and the pants and everywhere else. But the main idea was that we wanted this awesome texture on the metal. And this was my way of giving the metal a really interesting vibe because you know what's comfortable for me? Rust. I do rust on everything. If it's metal, I'm giving it rust just because I love it. I love the texture of the rust and I love the story that rust gives us. But 
I specifically went about this miniature, this paint scheme, in a way that was going to allow me to get away from doing rust because I'm comfortable doing rust and I want to try and push myself to do things that I hadn't tried before, I hadn't thought about. That's why you'll see no rust on this metal by the time we're finished. No rust. Just interesting texture and fleck and the metal looks old and aged and weathered. So while we're applying black to this metal, we, we want to be very careful. We're only putting it here and there. We're not just melting it all over the place. We're not dunking it in this black wash. We're just going to put a little bit here, a little bit there. If we put too much, we're going to lose that silver fleck, and especially the metal medium silver fleck. Now what we're doing here is we're actually glazing parts of the Tesla coils. And we're doing it in a strategic way. We're thinking about what we're doing here because we're going to darken the opposite side of the lightning. Wherever there's lightning close to this copper coils, we want to darken the other side of it. This is doing two things. This is creating darkness, which is going to make the, the light of the lightning appear brighter, but it's also creating the shadows and the highlights for the lightning later on. We're almost setting up that lightning. We're starting we're in the early stages of setting up the lightning and the glow. Let's pull that collar off the wire. I'm just going to dry fit him, see how he's looking. Get a bit of blue tack or some kind of sticky stuff and temporarily fix it in place. We're going to be able to take this off if we need to. Part six, we're going to refine elements and set up the glow. I'm going to use ceramite white for this, thinned with water. I'm going to start by painting all of the lightning. Let's start with the lightning on his noggin, zapping between one spark plug to the next. We've also got these tiny little sparks, these tiny little sculpted sparks popping out of some of the some of the spark plugs. Now when I'm painting something like this, I always start with the lightning and I always start with a base coat of white because we want this to be very pure. We want it to be very bright and very powerful. He's got one eye in his staff and it's held floating in midair by two little pieces of lightning. He's going to very carefully paint his eyeballs, going to paint them white. Keep your hands together so you can get it nice and steady. And we're also going to paint the inside of his mouth white. Almost like there's some kind of white abyss of magic or, or some kind of shining light coming out of his gullet. Now we're going to use metal medium again. And what we're going to do with this is we're going to start highlighting all of the metal bits, but we're going to do it in a way that's setting up the glow for later on. And we're going to start by highlighting around this eye and all of the electricity and the lightning. These are the immediate areas close to these power sources and the glow is going to be really intense there. So we're using this metal medium. It's going to pick up all of the glazing that we do later on. We're going to stipple a little bit on these coils here as well, as well as this little dome bit of the Tesla coil. We've just got to imagine where we're a bit of lightning just flashing around, just bouncing around through the air and doing whatever lightning does and where we're going to go, where we're going to land and how we're going to display our colors, how we're going to show off to the world that we're, we're flashy. We're going, to, we're going to flash right here on this dome. We're going to be a little circle. So we're going to just whack a little circle on there. I'm going to whack a little circle on this side here. Hook a bit on them coils. And in any of the media areas where the lightning touches a surface, just, just spread a little bit of this metal medium around it. Like right here where the lightning arc is touching the metal rod. Just, it's just going to hit that rod and explode a little zap out of it. And as the paint starts to dry on the brush, that's a good thing, because then we can start feathering it out a little bit. Just start poking the brush around and getting a little bit of fade happening. 
almost like a little bit of dry brushing action. Well, look at this, but it is dry brushing, isn't it? It's dry brush stippling, whatever you want to call it, I don't know. Don't need to label it, do we? Just do it. Now remember, we really want to preserve our details, our texture. The detail and the texture, the texture and the details and the details and the texture. You know, that spatter we added earlier, it's precious to us. So we want to preserve it and keep it alive. So when we're highlighting, we don't want to overdo it. We don't want to cover up that texture. We don't want to block in too much. We don't want to fiddle with it too much because you do too much and you do too much. You fiddle around with it too much, you're going to cover up all that detail. So all we want to do is just pick up some of these highlights in the texture. Just make them flash, make them shine. Pick out any rivets like this on his boot cap. Yeah, so we want to, we always want to make sure that we're we're finding the right balance between making things look nice and smooth and blended versus textured and rough. We don't want it to look too rough and nasty. But we also don't want it to look too smooth and cover up all the texture. Like have a go at this can here. Look how much character it's got. But it also has all of the highlights and everything. It looks neat enough, but it's got character. I'm gonna turn him up and highlight the underside of the opening of the can. Got a chain link here where he's broken free because the wizards, they probably get chained up and left somewhere so they don't cause too much havoc. But inevitably, they're always gonna get out. They're always gonna escape. Especially when your minders, the whiz runts, they're just getting wasted on orc booze. Bloody useless. Now we want to highlight his spark plugs. We want to make sure that they're, they're nice and shiny and they're reflecting that lightning for when we do some green glazing later on. Yeah. Metal's looking alright. I reckon. Let's take the head off and scrape away the glue that's dried on the back of there, that super glue. So it'll fit nicely when we glue it later on. We're just going to blue tack it temporarily in place so that we can take it off and get to some more metal around his collar. Because again, we're setting up that highlight, we're setting up the glow for later on. So we want to we wanna put these highlights around his collar in relation to the lightning around his head. We want to make sure that that lightning is is casting light on this metallic area. And we can just take the head off like that, get to it, get to the hard to reach areas and put the head back on and see where we need to put the next bit of highlight. Now we're going back to Kislev Flesh again. We're going back and forth with Kislev Flesh to highlight all of the leather and the rope and stuff. Do it about three or four times throughout this whole process, I think. Sort of jump around all over the place in this paint scheme. Like we jump between painting a bit of the skin and going back to the metal and then going back to the leather and stuff. And then we'll go back to the skin again, tweak the metal, tweak the leather. Round and round we go till it looks good. When I sculpted this rope, I wanted it to look really savage and kind of ratty so rather than that kind of standard twisted rope it's more like individual bits of rope wrapped around each other like like wire wound tightly together almost like dreadlocks looks kind of like dreadlocks now I really enjoy highlighting leather belts I like making them look all cut and scratched kind of wonky and just by adding a few little kiss lev flesh highlights to the edges and under the the holes where the belt buckles go it just really brings it to life and gives it a lot of character like this is all, all cracked and old like this is a nasty belt he's probably whipped some runts with it in his time highlight these little bits of rope here this twine and also gonna 
hit the edges on the patches on the back of his cape start getting a bit of work done on them back to his boots now have a look here we're highlighting the tops of his boots just a very faint line dividing the boot from the pants we can also put a little bit of highlight on the top of the, the, the sole of the boot add some little scratches like this some stippling always keeping our texture going defining this boot here as well from the pants making sure these boots look very old and leathery and savage while we've got the Kislev flesh out we can highlight the pots as well just highlighting the edges and adding a few little scratches a few little stipple dots whatever you want hit the lip of it here to make it a little bit more defined as well as the neck of the bottle and we're not going to forget these little cracked bits on the ground shattered pots these are basically segmented concave cylinders so we're just doing a little bit of a, a line highlight in the center of them screaming skull this is a great color i always use it we're going to use it today for the teeth now all we're going to do is base coat the teeth we're not going to do too much work to the teeth to be honest because they're going to be covered with glow and they're going to be a little bit silhouetted we're going to darken them down a little bit later but if you want you can just paint the teeth with this screaming skull and hit it with a brown wash like seraphim sepia or agrax earthshade we're going to use screaming skull to just paint over the stitches on the back of his cape again we're not going to do too much work to it we're doing this fairly quickly because this is this is a model for a little orc army i'm doing this is an army scheme it's not a win competition scheme even going to just ping out some of the some of the little frayed bits on these bits of rope we can paint each individual dot or we can just sort of dry brush along the the ridge of it and let the dry brush pick it out we're going to go back to our blighted gold and just hit this little skull here on this bit of scrap metal obviously he's gotten this from some kind of imperial scrap he's found that in the in the pink lad scrap pile now we're going to use agrax earth shade fantastic color this is love it and we're going to do a similar thing that we did before with that black wash we're just going to poke around with this we're not going to smother it everywhere we are pretty much going to paint this over every element of the model so the metal the skin the gold the bronze the pots everything but we're not going to dunk it see how we're just sort of putting a little bit here putting a bit there making this bit a little bit dirty making that bit a little bit dirty throwing a bit on this can but we're not drowning we're not dunking it this is just very controlled and we're using it to to darken up what we need uh, and dirty up what we need to find some recesses add a little bit more interest to the metal and when you place this over the metal you don't lose the texture all it does is just tint that little part of it a kind of brown color I'm just carefully putting some on the fingers and the hands here but spoiler alert in a minute I'm just gonna go bugger all that and paint Agrax all over the skin we're gonna hit the whole cape with it we're going to tint this cape with a little bit of brown so in the end this cape is not going to be black and it's not going to be gray and it's not going to be brown it's going to be a little bit of everything but the agrax earth shade just helps pull all of our stippling together makes it a little bit less messy pulls the shadows the mids and the highlights all together and they're all playing together in the same playground that same muddy brown dirt agrax playground and now we're going back again to the wizard stick here see we're doubling up now see and when you double up with something like agrax earthshade you really notice it two layers of agrax is very powerful it's very potent 
so that's why you don't want to go super heavy on it all at once also doing the same thing to the pants that we did to the cloak we've gone pretty heavy on this collar bit because we want the collar to remain quite dark so that the lightning that we do later on appears brighter always remember that when you're doing something like that you you can make things seem brighter by having the areas around it darker I'm gonna paint the space squig Fergus just hit him with the Arax earth shade let him have a dry and then we'll come back to him a bit later now we're going to go back to the skin remember I mentioned we're gonna just carefully gingerly cautiously paint this Agrax earth shade on the skin because you know we're being we're, we're, we're in our comfort zone but bugger that let's get out of our comfort zone and just start smashing the Agrax earth shade all over the skin let's just do it just get it everywhere it's going to do the same thing as it did with the cloak and the pants it's just going to pull all of the skin together we, we're still going to have our texture we're still going to have our green and we're going to have our highlights we're going to have everything it's just going to be tinted a little bit brown in the Mezgold video I said not to hit the skin with a wash that doesn't mean you don't ever do it and it also doesn't mean you just do what I say um, and especially when I say do one thing and then I, the next day I say do the exact opposite um, we just do it we just experiment we just try different things different things have different purposes this is a miniature for for an army we're painting it a lot quicker we're not worried about things like the creases um, in in between each muscle for something like this how we go this when it's dried hit his nipples with a second coat of agrax let's darken the nipples give the nipples some attention right let's finish fergus up going to use Kislev flesh and again like always we're going to just stipple this all over and we're not going to even do too much work five minutes is just going to take because you know what that super thin Kislev flesh coat that we put on earlier that's already created so much texture and interest because we put it over black and the black's kind of shining through the black is in the raised areas and the light is in the, the the sunken areas and that's also just created this mottled kind of interesting skin texture that you might see on any kind of like space beast and all we're going to do with the Kislev flesh is just pull it all together just neaten it up by highlighting the edges highlighting the skin folds highlighting the wrinkles the eyebrows and the cheekbones and his little nose here under his eye sockets all we're doing is highlighting those edges and we don't need to do any glazing or anything because the skin texture is is awesome and you couldn't even paint it if you tried you just let the you just let the wash do the work for you that kislev flesh wash that we did earlier over a dark base coat think it outside the box think outside the square and create these, some of these kinds of textures a randomness that you can't do on purpose we're going to use some screaming skull again this time to highlight the claws on his feet the tips of his toes and we're also going to use it to expand the range of highlights on the skin like up here on his eyebrow and all of the prominent areas on his face his lips his nose and we'll also highlight down the ridge line on his back just anywhere where we think we can brighten up this skin liven it up a bit again remember we're just we're just pulling this little guy together it's only taking it's literally taking five minutes I'm putting minimal effort into it but getting maximum result you know this paint scheme and and this video it's all about getting out of our comfort zone and finding the magic but the other thing we want to do is we want to work smart not work hard that's what we have to do if we want to paint an army to a really high standard 
Now we're going to go back to the skin, but let's have a look at it for a minute. Yagrax Earth shaders dried, and well, that was close. So anyway, have a look at this part of the deltoid. We can still see that awesome texture shining through, but we've got this nice brown shade darkening towards the bottom. Uh, we've got nice highlights at the top, and we've got the sheen as we turn it in the light. We can see it. So we've got we've kept everything, even though we nailed it with some Agrax Earth shade. All we did was tinted it and gave it a little bit more of a dirty color. See up here, we did the same sort of thing. We kept all of the texture. All we did was tinted it. Now we've got some brown, some, oh, I'm not going to say rust, it's not rust, but it's just a bit of tarnishing, a bit of dirtiness, a bit of muck, a bit of character. And we've kept our texture. And all these details down here, they're nicely defined now, whereas before they weren't. I'm going to mix some Kislev flesh with wire flesh, just like we did back in the day. We're just going to brighten up some of these muscles now. So we darkened them down, we dirtied them down. What we want to do is just stipple on the, just the highlights, just the very peaks where we want to brighten them up a little bit. Super easy. Nothing to it. We've done it before. What we've got to do is just do it again, just to liven up each, each muscle, each skin fold, each bit of tummy flab, each little knuckle just the interesting parts of the body, of the anatomy. Stipple, 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 poke, 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 that's all we're doing. Now I love to sculpt orcs with a little bit of a layer. Like a little bit of a, a little bit of tummy flab. A bit of love handles. I like to exaggerate their obliques. And their back muscles, I sag them a bit. Get some saggy, they got some saggy man orc boobs. Uh, what do you think of that? Let me know. Do you like do you like flabby orcs? Do you like fully ripped orcs? Do you like skinny little shriveled orcs? No one likes skinny little shriveled orcs. Still using the same mix. Well, pretty much the same mix. It's just a little bit lighter. And we're just going to highlight the fingernails, or the claws. I like to paint my orcs with sort of skin colored nails. Like if you look at my nails there, I got, have, a, have a look at those nails, mate. I could be a hand model. Where, where was I? Oh, yeah, my fingernails. Yeah, I don't have, like, bone-colored fingernails, do I? That'd just be weird. My fingernails are sort of the same color as the skin around them. They're a little bit lighter. So I like to apply the same kind of principle to my orcs and my space monsters. Could be a hand model. I'll lighten up, okay? With some screaming skull. Just put a little bit in the mix and continue highlighting the nails. Remember that there's going to be some glow coming from that lightning, so we're going to focus the highlights towards uh, towards that lightning on these nails. As well as towards the tips of the nails. I, I like to make the tips of the nails a little bit sharper. A little bit brighter. Well, we've got that mix out. Let's just highlight some of the nails. Not the nails. We did that already. I mean the knuckles. I like to sculpt the tendons in the back of the hand that move the knuckles, that move the fingers. So let's let's hit them. Don't make me sculpt them for no reason. Let's just sit back and have a look at it and see how it's looking. I think it looks pretty good. Now we just need to continue though on the face. Again, remember, I'm going to paint some war paint over this face, pretty much over the whole face. But to be honest, that was a bit of a last minute decision. So at this stage, I'm just painting the face because I thought it wasn't going to be a waste of time. But, you know, war paint's not for everybody. So if you don't want to do war paint, you just have to highlight the face like this. Now we're getting close to the next chapter and the next chapter is all about painting the glow so we're going to do one more little touch up with ceramite white all around the model this is our final chance to establish the foundations for the glow that we're about to do so we're just using our ceramite white to go around and find any sharp edges that we might have missed or any immediate areas very close to 
where there's a power source. I'm going to do that on the Tesla coils as well. Right near the lightning, we're just adding a few little tiny little special pings of white, little white dots where the lightning is very close. We've got blue tack on that head, remember, so that we can we can just put it on and find, oh yeah, it's this bit here, it's very close to the lightning. But we're gonna add a few little dots, a few little sparks even, you know, like when we glaze over it, these might pick up a bit of the green glaze that we're gonna apply later. These little tiny bits of the diamond plate, the checker plate, we're gonna highlight them. Tiny little details like this, they help sell the glow back to the eye putting some more white on the eye sockets around the eye sockets on the cheekbones here and I reckon that should do it we're ready to make this thing glow green stuff welds fluoro lime green you could use mook green if you want but you know you do the math if it is math these washable membranes from red grass games on the wet palette they're awesome you can just wipe them off can even get up and run them under the tap but I've got to get off my chair for that so I'm just gonna sit here and use a tissue and clean a tiny little spot and get some of this fluoro green and mix a lot of water into it we want to thin this right down look how thin it is super thin and we just wick away most of the water on the tissue and start glazing over this lightning or well, we start with the lightning I'm just gonna paint over all of the little lightning arcs first and then we can think about venturing out now I don't really have much to say about this. You just have to paint a lightning. I'm just gonna sit back and let you let you watch it. I'm gonna go have a break and I'll be right back. Right, now we're starting to venture out a little bit, aren't we? We're starting to add a little bit of glow. Now remember before I said when I make glow I like to have or like at least two colours. Like if I'm doing a red glow I'll have two reds. I'll, uh, if I'm doing a green glow I'll have two greens. One's a really hot, vibrant, intense colour like this what we're using right here. And then the other one's going to be a cooler colour. We're going to be using Beale Tan Green later on. But you can see how glazing this in the immediate area around the lightning it's very hot very intense you can tell that this glow is right next to the lightning and it not only tints the immediate area around it but it not only tints the highlights that we added before but it, it tints the shadows like any kind of null oil or agrax earthshade wash that we did earlier it's going to actually tint that as well it's going to make that, that you know if before it was like black in the gaps so now it's going to this is stuff's going to turn it like a like a dark green but a vibrant dark green it's very powerful stuff so be careful with it because you can go too far you can do too much it can knock your socks off with great power comes great responsibility now i've got three main colors that i've been using to do this sort of green glow um, or three similar colors. I showed you before moot green is kind of similar to this green stuff world fluoro green. I also have um, Necrotite green. I've used that for a long time, but So far I've found that this stuff here this green stuff. It's it's the best. It's simply the best. It's better than all the rest But you do have to be careful with it. Make sure you glaze it very thinly thinly Make sure you've got a lot of water with it and that allows us to just smash it all over the cape here in all over this part of his body letting it just bathe in the light of that wizard stick we're going to mix some of this fluorescent lime with ceramite white and we're going to paint over the lighting because like i said it's a very powerful stuff and i did two coats over this lighting and it was too much you can see how the lightning on his noggin on his head is a lot lighter than this lighting up here was 
but that's okay because we're getting a bit of blending happening so we're, we can paint some of this in the center of the eye and it gives it gives a bit of a blend we can paint the edge of these sparks here and it gives a little bit more interest but the main thing is it gives more consistency to the lightning there we go it looks a bit better now we're going to swap out for our cool green bill tan green we're going to glaze this around the collar we want to darken the collar down like i said that fluorescent lime green is powerful stuff and i feel like i overdid it a little bit on his collar and his head has kind of gotten a bit lost among the collar we always want to make sure that the head is the focus and it's always standing out it's always easy to find easy to look at easy to distinguish between what's going on with the rest of the miniature but you know this powerful stuff is starting to take over a little bit so we've got to calm it down got to calm our farm right down and take control and that's what we're doing here with this beel tan green just calming down the green calming down the glow and cooling it cooling it right down you can see that now the head pops out from the from the collar a little bit better part eight home stretch gets super glue we're going to super glue this collar we're going to paint a bit of the base now using steel legion drab and an uncomfortable amount of water just get it and smash it all over the base be careful around the stuff that we've painted but all we've got to do is just flatten the brush like we are here and be in control of it flatten the bristles and push it into the hard to reach places be smart Work smart, not hard. Look at this. Done. Needs another coat though, doesn't it? Nah, 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 nah. Let's just leave it like this. I'm serious, we will. We're going to let that black shine through the brown. And when it dries, I'll show you how it looks. No, nah, I will. I'll show you. Just have a sit and wait. And when you see it, you'll be like, oh, man, yeah. But while it's drying, we're going to darken the collar even more. Using Nuln Oil this time. Just straight up i want it dark so what i'm going to do i'm just going to get the darkest most badass color ever known oil just just black black wash you want to make something darker just hit it with some black problem solved the other thing it's going to do is it's going to it's going to redefine some of the the recesses like rivets there are rivets around and little bumps and nails and stuff little holes I want them to be black a little bit more black at least same with the spark plugs on his head I just want them to be darker so that we can see what's going on because he's got green skin and he's got green lightning so we've got to be careful we don't want it to all look like it's all mashed together back to some fluorescent lime with ceramite white again just getting back to that mix and what we're going to do now is just one final little highlight we're going to pick out the little as I said before, the rivets, the bumps, these little bits of um, checker plate, whatever they're called. The edges close to the head and the little chain links holding all of his little frilly flaps to his necklace thing, his neck collar. Just highlight stuff, man. Just use this, use this stuff to highlight the stuff that's around the glowing stuff. And it's all stuff that we've already highlighted throughout this whole process but you know now we're just making it green we're gonna use a little bit of kiss lead flesh again because it's a magical color and we've, we've used it a million times before we'll use it a million times again I'm highlighting some little scratches and little nicks around his mouth around his lips I sculpted them in there to make it look like he's got like you know he's shouting all the time so he's got a little bit of cracked lips and we're gonna thin some of it down even and run it into the recesses around his lips like so when I make when I sculpt orcs I like to make their lips all bumpy and chunky and ridgy and I actually like to put some of this lighter color in the recesses around there. Now we're going to switch to some Screaming Skull and highlight those even a little bit further. Now 
you know, like imagine if you look at a chicken leg, right? Yeah, you know, like imagine a chicken leg that's like a black chicken leg, and it's, it's all it's all scaly and it's all black and bumpy, but the cracks between the little bumps they're all white, or they're lighter. You know, that's what we're going for. That sort of effect. We're even using some of this straight up screaming skull now to do one final highlight on the skin just brightening the skin one little bit more one more final step especially on the side um, that's facing the lightning this is the final the final step final chapter of this miniature and all we're doing now is just going around and touching up things just tweaking bits and pieces, making the skin a little bit brighter, making the cloak a little bit brighter, making the pants brighter, whatever, the leather, we're going to come back to that again I'm sure, because I, I love highlighting that leather, just tweaking it and making it as best as we can make it, defining this little bit of skin here on his hand, where the wizard stick sticks out. I'm always trying to make sure different sections, different elements are well defined, separated from one another. We can just add it on black and thin it down with a little bit of water. I'm going to paint Fergie's eyes. Nice and calm breathing. Take nice, calm, slow breaths when you're doing this. Run a little bit in between his lips to darken those up. Well, we've got that black out. We're going to actually glaze over the orc's teeth and kind of make them a bit of a silhouette so that they, again, darkening darkening the area around the glow. His gullet is glowing. There's some kind of funky, unnatural abyss going on inside his mouth. And we want the teeth and the area around it to be dark so that that seems brighter. And now ceramite white to just hit the very centers of the eyes, making them very bright. Sorry, my head's in the way here. I've got to get my face right up in there so I can see it. Back to some lime green. Just glazing around the mouth, inside the mouth, making it just feel a little bit hotter. A little bit more intense and crazy. See that gullet? See how, how mad that looks? How glowing that is, how intense it is, and that's part of an optical illusion we created by darkening the teeth and his tonsils and, and his tongue and all that. And we're doing one final glaze with this fluorescent lime green over this side of his body. Oh, doing a bit more in his mouth, which is we should want to make that really, try and make that a bit of a focus. We're going to get our dry brush, and we're going to dry brush some Screaming Skull all over the base. Remember, we did that very thin wash, that, well, that very thin coat of Steel Legion Drab, and see how you can see all the black shining through it? Gives you that instant mottled look, instant texture, instant color variation, instant winning. And all we're doing now is just dry brushing over it, pulling it together just like we did with Fergus. Get a bit of Nuln Oil, and we're going to lay down our first coat of Nuln Oil on the spilt orc booze. Now, this is sculpted to the base, so all you got to do is just color in between the lines. You know, yeah, you could do that. Once we've done that and it's dried, we'll hit it with a second coat later on. But for now, we're going to add a little bit of shadow around some of the elements on the base, like around Fergus. I like to add shadows around bullet casings like this, around little bits of rock. Just smash a little bit under, Ferg under Fergus, under his jaw. We're going to do some around this big rock here. Just poke it a little bit here, here and there. Just, again, giving more variation, more modeled texture, more interest. Back to kiss the flesh again. Thinning this right down into a wash and just running it 
into the eye socket, like the bottom part of the eye socket. It's just going to make his eyes pop out a little bit more. It's also going to help define and neaten up the eyes because, you know, the eyes have that sculpted detail. And he sort of just runs around that detail and defines it neatly. Back to Nolan Oil for our second coat on the spilt orc booze, darkening it up again. Notice how we didn't just hit this with a solid coat. We dry brushed all of the dirt colors underneath it and everything. So it's going to look a little bit translucent. Like you're going to see some of the, some of the earth through it. Don't forget he's got a few little drips of orc booze poking out of his mouth here because he's been at it. This little space rat, he's been licking up the spilt orc booze for sure. Little medium again. This is a little trick I use to, I like to, I like to use this instead of white sometimes to hit eyes just a tiny little dot on the eyes and this is like metallic white anyway so it just gives it a little bit of a shimmer when you turn it in the light Let's glue his head on let's do it it's time it is time it is time for more kislev flesh again refining highlights this time we're doing a bit of work on the pot more work on the belt of course I love highlighting leather. Just going around and pinging those little little bright spots, making them brighter. Even getting a bit of kiss left flesh here on the on the pants. Look at the pants. We stabbed those with my wife's brush. We just smashed it. And look how nice it looks now. We got a bit of Fenrisian grey, a bit of kiss left flesh. We did some Agrax Earthshade, we did some black washes. And it was all so easy, and it's just all coming together nicely now as we near the end of this miniature. We've got some nice blends. Blends that happened by throwing paint at it and stabbing it with a mangled brush, and then just simply pulling it all together with a few little washes and edge highlights, like what we're doing here. Doing a tiny little edge highlight just goes a long way, doesn't it? You don't have to edge highlight every single bloody surface. Now, I'm really comfortable painting my base rooms black. I do it every time, so let's paint this one black. I have it on black base rooms all the way. Or not, we're getting out of our comfort zone. We're going to paint this base room with Steel Legion Drab. But I'm so glad we did because afterwards I felt so nostalgic about it. Like it's got that classic third edition orc feel, you know, like that des that classic desert vibe. And I grew up with that. Now, painting miniatures is problem solving. Everything in life is problem solving. But we're looking at this miniature and I see a problem and I, I just don't think his face is drawing enough attention. It's drawing a lot of attention, but not enough. How do we solve that problem? What if we paint a white skull on it? And he's grey seer. So you see what I mean? You've got to look at the miniature and go, why isn't this working? Or what's working? And what can I do to fix it? Like, it, it's as simple as that. Like, you look at his face and go, it's not drawing enough attention. How do I draw attention to it? Well, I could do this or I could do that. I could paint a freaking huge white skull on it, couldn't I? That's going to draw attention. You know, you could, you could do something like, something even more drastic, like change the lightning on his on his head to be red or something. That's going to be a bit hard to undo all of the green that we've done. But, you know, when when I was first designing this miniature, I was imagining him with a red lightning on his wizard stick and blue lightning coming out of his head. But when I was when I was at the stage of actually picking the paints off my paint rack earlier, like with my caveman color theory, I just I just reached for the fluoro green instead of the the fluoro red I don't know why I just did and I'm glad I did because I really like all of the the kind of alien green that we've got going on but you know it presented itself with its own problem and that was the face was the face was not standing out enough from the wizard stick it wasn't standing out enough from the green skin so we just had to we had to do something we had to act we're nearing the end and I want to I want to dirty up the hem of this cape, just stippling some 
steel legion drab on there with a big dry brush just stippling it on the bottom nothing to it just blend it out don't go too heavy on it it just makes it look like his cape's been sort of dragging around in the dirt dragging around in the desert a bit of storytelling putting the miniature in the same environment as the base in which he stands switch to a finer brush water it down get a bit of stippling get a bit of glazing get a bit of washing going on a bit of whatever just going back to my thought process with designing these orcs designing these miniatures the orcs are very nostalgic to me they're very close to my heart they're a huge part of my childhood and the feelings I have when I think about my childhood and I am channeling that love into each one of these miniatures that I design it's time to spray the model with some matte varnish this is especially important for gaming miniatures if you're going to be using this for battles and stuff because the oils in your hand that's just good. they're going to wreck the paint see i've got a glove on because the oils in my hand will wreck the paint we're going to use nurgle's rot to paint the orc booze remember this is just some sloppy gross like concoction probably made out of some kind of fungus or mushrooms I don't even know what maybe it's made out of mashed up runts but it's green it relates to the orcs it relates to the glow that's going on up on his head and his wizard stick green is best now we're going to get back to some ceramite white and I forgot to highlight the skull on his face before I varnished it doesn't really matter though you can still paint after you've varnished something as long as it's not too much and as long as it's not in any really important places where you're going to be handling it because you know if it's in a, if it's in a spot where you're going to be handling it all the time while you're playing with your toys it'll rub off now we're really nearing the end of the miniature now and we're just going to go around and touch up so while we're doing that, I'm just going to have a chat with you about something. Just remember, remember this, is, this video has been all about getting out of our comfort zone and trying things that are just, that might seem just completely random and strange and left the field like, you know, flicking paint all over a model, flicking silver paint all over a model and having it shine through in the skin and the clothing and stuff. It's weird, it's strange, but you know what, I'm glad I did it because it's given the model such a unique style. I mean, it's still got a Mezgeik style, um, and I'm, uh, it still looks like I painted it, but it's just, it's just a little bit different. And I really, I really actually enjoyed painting it. I loved it. I loved the whole process from sculpting this model to printing it out, to cleaning it, to, to painting it, to throwing, throwing shit at it, to almost knocking it over like this, you know so by by doing these strange things that are outside the, outside the box outside the square thinking it's taken the model to places that i wouldn't normally go it's made me it's made me feel really happy it's given me those nostalgic feelings of when i was a kid i mean this almost looks like the orc army that i painted when i was like 13. it's obviously <laughs> a little bit better a little bit different but it has the same kind of colors and it was almost unintentional this I did the base this kind of color um, and I did the skin in a very similar color I had some fluoro green going on it's very similar think outside the box mates don't be afraid to try something different see where it takes you that's where you're going to find the magic doing things like the like the really thin coats letting the dark stuff shine through giving you all that random texture that you'll, you'll never get on purpose do stuff like that take risks be pioneers discover things invent things invent new ways of painting it's not easy to do you know you know what it's hard but do you know what you know what's happening when it's when something's hard it means you're trying your hardest so try your hardest don't whinge about it the wizard fergus and two whiz runs.
were completely useless and hammered on orc booze. Shit boys, like it! The bloody wizard's coming! Growing up, my mum took me and my brothers to the games workshop every school holidays. It was such a special time for us. We looked forward to it all the time. We just wanted to get that school rubbish out of the way so that it would hurry up and be school holidays again. So mum could pile us in the Land Cruiser and take us to the games workshop. I remember one day, so clearly, standing in the car park. It was very hot. It was the middle of summer. Mum had just taken us to the games workshop. We were all getting back in the Land Cruiser. We all had our loot that she'd bought us, our miniatures. And I was holding this little blister pack of metal orc freebooters. There was just two of them in there. I was looking at it, just marveling at it, just thinking, what kind of god do you have to be to make something as amazing as this? And I thought, I would never be able to make something as awesome as this. I might as well try and be an astronaut or, you know, the king. But I was just holding them. I was only nine or so and I was just thinking, man, I just, I would love to one day be making models like this. This is the epitome to me. I just loved these orcs that I was holding in my hands. And from that day I was hooked. And that is the day. I decided that I'm going to make miniatures one day. And it's been a long time, a very long time between now and then. And during that time, my life, like everybody's life, had other plans for my plans, but I never gave up. And now I'm finally here. I'm making miniatures for you and I'm making miniatures for me. Your kids, Huey and Bella, want to say hello. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah, that old. Oh, okay. Me too. And yeah. I need you. And I need daddy. And I need da. Yeah. And I need hi, um. You like my computer? You like my orcs? Do you like my friends who are watching this video? Yeah, I need you. I need hi, da. Say hi, legends. Hi, husbands. Hey, Bella, say hi, legends. Hi, legends. Hi, husbands. Hi, bye. Bye.